Hybrid vehicles have been around for more than 20 years now, but many consumers still really don't understand them. Maybe you personally would never consider owning a hybrid, probably because you think, you know, they're just too tiny, they're too unattractive, they're too slow, and they're just too weird, too hard to understand. But times have changed. There's a whole new generation of hybrids out there that could be today's smart choice. Starting in 2020, a whole new generation of hybrids have hit the market. For example, too tiny? This 21 Toyota Highlander Hybrid with three rows. Or this 21 Toyota Hybrid minivan are certainly not tiny. Too unattractive? Critics are raving about the looks of this 21 Venza Hybrid by Toyota in any color. Or this Ford Escape Hybrid, a sharp looking vehicle. Too slow? This stunning 22 Tucson Hybrid to 0 to 60 in the 6 second range. Actually, today's next generation hybrids are all about economy with performance. Too weird? Hybrid technology is over 20 years old and well refined. Its reliability has been confirmed by experts. Professional drivers like Uber, Lyft, and many taxi drivers all swear by hybrids for a good reason. They're reliable and economical. This video will explain in layman's terms why hybrids are now taking off. We'll briefly tackle what is a hybrid vehicle, why is this new generation better, how exactly did they save gas, and why today's hybrids may be a better choice than a pure electric vehicle. And we'll conclude by showing you some of today's many hybrid choices. So what makes a regular car or truck a hybrid? Understanding a regular gas-powered vehicle is simple. It is a gas-powered engine that drives the wheels that moves the vehicle. A hybrid adds an additional electric motor and battery that is also capable of driving the vehicle even all by itself. So how do you ask, can adding all this complexity be a good thing? Well, because it turns out that gasoline engines and electric motors are totally different animals. Gas engines at idle, like at a red light, are not very powerful. A 200 horsepower gas engine, when idling, is only producing maybe 15 or 20 horsepower. Contrast that with a 60 horsepower electric motor, which has its full 60 horsepower available at idle. Engineers have always dreamed about combining the advantages of each engine type into one. Today's new generation of hybrids does just that, providing seamless integration of gas and electric power. So why is this new generation better? While many earlier hybrids are still with us, their original electric motors and batteries were minimal in size, limiting their top electric speed to about 40 miles an hour. And then they needed gasoline power for any speeds above that. Today's new hybrids have larger batteries and motors, allowing them longer periods of pure electric driving. Using this new Santa Fe hybrid as an example, here we're cruising over 70 miles an hour on electric power alone. The gasoline engine is not even running and no gas is being used. If this was a pure electric car, it would be exactly the same experience. As you'll see, these new hybrids are almost electric vehicles, only without their inherent disadvantages. So how exactly do they save gas? The easiest way to explain how they save gas is to come along in the new Santa Fe Hybrid for a typical local drive. As you power up your hybrid, typically the gasoline engine doesn't start. Your initial slow driving is all electric, but at some point the gas engine will seamlessly start itself. You may not even notice when or care, but for this demo we'll keep track of exactly when it's running and using gas. Here, let me point out an important fact you may not realize about hybrid vehicles. Just like a pure electric vehicles, they also have electric air conditioning. That means your AC keeps pouring out cold air even while your gas engine's not even running like at a red light. So for example, if you have a job where you often park and do paperwork in your vehicle, 
or you often need to wait in the car for whatever reason, you can do so fully air conditioned while your AC works off the battery. Yeah, the gas engine will automatically run every so often for short periods to recharge the battery, but it's all automatic. So you're saving gas even while you're parked and waiting. Getting back to our demo drive, here's a brief look at normal local driving. In the Santa Fe Limited, you can pick how you like your instrument cluster to look. Here I'm using the Q display, showing your miles per hour on the left and miles per gallon on the right. 45 miles an hour. Also check out how well Hyundai's Level 2 self-driving technology works. On this test drive, I purposely keep my hands off the steering wheel often so that you can get an idea of how well Hyundai's smart cruise control with stop and go and lane following assist work together. Let's speed up this test and get to the point here. How do hybrids save gas? Actually, it's simple. In a typical local drive in normal traffic, while I've driven for almost an hour, my gasoline engine has only been running for less than half that time. Consider this. This Santa Fe is a fairly large family SUV with mechanical four-wheel drive. Yet in non-freeway local driving, it almost always gets over 40 miles to the gallon. So hybrids achieve their super economical driving by using their electric power as much as possible and not their gas engines. In a sense, you could say, Today's hybrids are almost electric cars. Which brings us to our next point. Could a hybrid be a better choice than an electric vehicle? Let's compare them. Starting with a couple obvious electric vehicle concessions. Like if you need a pure electric driving experience to save the planet or whatever, only a pure EV will work as a hybrid is only powered by electricity some of the time. And if you need to have the fastest car on the road, only a pure EV will work for that. But if you have other needs, like how far can you drive on a full tank and charge, then you need to really understand EV batteries and charging. Different electric vehicles have different maximum charge rates. Let's pick 150 kilowatts as an example. You stop to charge your new electric vehicle and connect to a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. If you're thinking you're going to get a constant 150 kilowatts, it doesn't work like that. All EV batteries accept a variable amount of current that depends on the current state of charge. Here your battery is almost empty. It will get a maximum 150 kilowatts, and in 20 minutes you'll get enough charge to drive 100 miles. But now your battery is at 30%. Its charge rate drops to maybe just 100 kilowatts or so. After 30 total minutes, your battery may be halfway full, but that doesn't mean it will be completely charged in one hour because the charging rate is now dropped to only 50 or 60 kilowatts. After about 45 minutes of fast charging, you've arrived at the magic 80%. 80% of all EVs, even Teslas, drastically slow down their charging rate to a trickle in order to preserve their batteries. At this point, if you stay plugged in for a full charge, it could take another hour or more. That's why when traveling in an EV, almost everyone limits their range to about 200 miles about 200 miles this is a real world EV range between charges here's where a hybrid really shines most get 500 to 600 miles or more on a full tank but wait EVs lose 30 percent or more range in cold weather meaning your winter range may only be 160 miles and maybe uncomfortable miles as EV car heaters can be poor compared to a hybrid heater then consider refueling time Electric vehicles need about 38 to 45 minutes to get their charge, while hybrids gas up in no time. And finding a station to charge up needs pre-planning in an EV. While in a hybrid, you just take off. Gas stations are everywhere. Then there's that premium price you may have to pay when you buy or lease an electric car. While hybrids only cost a few extra bucks, which you'll quickly make back in real gas savings. And if you think EVs will be cheaper to run because electricity is cheaper than gas, be aware that kilowatt prices at those superchargers come close to their equivalent gas prices. The bottom line is this. If you're a homeowner with a garage and your own 220 charger, and you seldom take long trips, an electric vehicle might be perfect for you. But if you live in an apartment or a condominium 
with no source for charging, a hybrid makes much more sense. We'll close by checking out some of the many new available hybrids.